Okay, once again, welcome to Calvary Chapel Comakee, and today's the 29th of November 2020. And we're just going to glance at the book of Ephesians as a reminder of where we are as we lead into the, the wedding vows of Takeshire and Lizzie. And so God in his sovereignty has seen fit to, to show the husband and the wife, the marriage, as a perfect picture of Christ and his church. But let me pray. Lord, I thank you again for this morning. I thank you for your love to us, that we can count upon you, that you don't change, Lord. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, you say in your word. And so we trust you. And now we give ourselves to you once again as we open your word, Lord. We ask that through your spirit that you would open the eyes of our heart even to receive that perfect seed of your word, that it would take root and that fruit would be produced even in our lives, Lord, to bring glory to your kingdom and to even help people come into an eternal relationship with our Lord and Savior. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in Ephesians chapter 5, let's look at a couple of verses here that really highlight where we are today. In chapter 5, verse 32, it's kind of a summary statement of this whole passage. It says in verse 32, this is a great mystery, talking about the husband and the wife and the marriage and even the church. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. So when we have things like Wives, submit to your own husbands that we've already studied as unto the Lord. Uh, and even backing up further in verse 21, that we're submitting to one another, everyone in Christ. Uh, you know, in godly fear. The fear of God is very important because, see, God is their creator. So, yes, God has chosen through his son and his love for us to now adopt us into his family. And we can trust him. And he's our friend and he's our, he's our brother, Jesus himself. And yet, there's still a healthy fear that should be there. This uh, almost like in reverence awe of who God, who God really is, who uh, breathed life into his creation. And so that same God uh, even judged the whole world at one point through a flood. It was a worldwide flood. So there's a sense of fear toward this God that's described in the Bible. And yet, in this God that we fear, there's this perfect love towards his creation. And so his creation, when sin came in, uh, basically turned their back on God who loved them and took care of them and provided. And as soon as sin came into the world, God and his love for his creation started revealing his plan of the Messiah, the savior of the world, the one uh, lamb of God who t would take away the sin of the world. So that's his lo love for us. So a perfect love. So God's perfect love and, and the Father sending his son Jesus as the Messiah to this, this earth and then eventually the church being birthed at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, we have this picture growing and growing and growing of God's grace and his mercy and his love that is perfect. And so God sees fit to use the, the marriage, the husband and the wife, the one man, the one woman as a picture of Christ in the church. And so I've used words like, that's a tall order. You know, just being a human, being a husband, I see that there can be a lot of pressure in that and a lot of responsibility. But here's the good news, and I, I said it in my last teaching, that since God has poured his love in our hearts, Romans 5, 5, by the Holy Spirit, we have the power to follow through with God, what God commands, even in the marriage uh, unit. The husband and the wife. And so uh, the husband and the wife, the marriage, goes way back to Genesis. It's nothing new. It's not something that man created. It's nothing that we uh, dreamed up on our own. It was God's idea. In fact, it was his idea to make woman from the man. Uh, you know, and uh, the joke is when, when Adam saw the woman, he, he may have said something like, whoa, man, you know, woman. That's how a woman got the name because, it, because she was beautiful. And so consider this, uh, uh, Adam and Eve, before sin came into the, the earth, they were perfect in, in many ways. They lived in a perfect place, in a Garden of Eden, uh, without sin, and they were taken care of perfectly by God. And so imagine how beautiful both of them and how intelligent and wise uh, Adam and Eve were. And so just like that, I consider this, that when we speak of the church, so the church 
not speaking of the building or a denomination or a sign, but the actual church, the real church, the spiritual church, the people that are born again, that are alive in their spirit by the Holy Spirit, that's us, right? Worldwide, uh, we look uh, different you know, from other groups of people. Uh, we may have a different social standing. All these things doesn't matter. When, when you're in Christ, then you are his bride. So consider this, church, bride of Christ. The Lord looks at us and sees something so beautiful that he doesn't even want to turn his face away from that. And, and that's how he's viewed, uh, how we are viewed in his eyes. Of course, he sees the finished product. So, so Kirk, yes, I'm saved by the blood of the lamb, but I'm still broken in many ways uh, because I'm trapped in this body and I can still sin. I can still make bad choices. But see, God sees the finished product in us. When we keep just continually trusting Jesus, taking steps of faith, day by day, moment by moment, even in the hard times, he's working things out. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one who began it, he originated it, and he's going to finish it. That's in Philippians. It's a very powerful verse. But, but God views marriage as uh, something very special. And it says that the man and the, the wife, they should leave their parents and the two become one flesh. And so it's something special and it's something beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. So, so that all leads up to, but, but Kirk, okay, so I'm married. I've been married for a long time and things are tough. Things are difficult. Maybe you're here and uh, it didn't work out. The same God that I've described so far is the same God who will love you right where you are because his grace is for you right this moment in the most difficult situations. Even if you feel like you failed, the Lord doesn't see that. Why? Because those of us who trust him, who are looking to him, uh, because we needed a rescuer, we needed a savior, right? If we didn't need one, then Christ didn't need to come to this earth and take our sins upon him. But see, we all have our stories. So whether you're married or not, the same God who created you loves you right now in this moment. And he would especially love it that you trust him. And that's why we come together as a church. Because see, uh, we can talk about real things. We can talk about brokenness. We can talk about difficult situations. You know, uh, all the things that can happen in life, all the choices, even bad ones that I can make, that doesn't change who God is. And God loves us. He'll love you right where you are. And, and isn't that great news? So the good news of Christ isn't like for those who, you know, hey, look at me, I'm doing well. No, it's especially for those who kind of stumble and they get lost occasionally. See, we need a Savior like that, and that's who he is. And so when we talk about marriage, and even takes your and Lizzie, you've been married already for a long time, 25 years, is, would not be anything near average in this world any longer. And so that's a miracle. Uh, and so we're not going to get into their stuff, but I, I'm sure if they, were, if they wanted to tell stories, they could tell us of difficult times. Just like my wife and I, we've been married, I think, coming up 44 years. And so we have our stories, even yesterday. <laughs> you see what I mean? Not really. Did we? No, we did okay yesterday. Praise the Lord. All, all glory to his grace. But see, we're real people. We're really walking practically through this life that's difficult. This world right now, uh, you know, if my dad was still alive, he would be in shock of things that's happening right now. And then my grandfather and, and so on and so forth. The world is, is actually getting worse. See, the evolutionists would say that the world's getting better, but we don't see that. It's actually happening just the way Jesus said would happen in Scripture. You know, wars and rumors of wars and all, even pestilence when you think about that in Matthew 24 and 25. Things that Jesus warned his guys about. We see that happening. But, you know, one thing that doesn't change is that we can continue to put our trust in Jesus. Amen? Okay, so that leads into... Uh, just one thing I, I want before we have take sure and Lizzie come up. Uh, if you need help, if you're struggling, especially in your marriage, but even if you're single and you're struggling, uh, you can find help here. Uh, you can find help with the men. Come to me. Ask me questions. You know, we can sit down. We can have a coffee. And we can talk about real stuff. And we can be in prayer. 
But you know, when Jesus commanded to go, therefore, into all nations and make disciples, see, that's what I'm talking about. See, discipleship is, it's the whole package. Discipleship doesn't just equal, oh yeah, I'm going to memorize some verses and I'm going to be a good guy. Discipleship is down in the, the nitty gritty, the dirty stuff, the, the brokenness. And I even think of it as in-depth discipleship. When you're talking to a brother, you know, and, and they're married and they're struggling and they're ready to give up, you know. And, and so I can sit down and I can say, hey, man, I've been there. I understand that. Uh, my heart's broken with you right now. And I can rejoice when you rejoice and I can weep when you weep. And then we have Gail, for uh, one example, that can help with the women. Even on Tuesdays and Thursdays here in this, this room right here, uh, she has couch corner from noon until 2. So if you're going through some tough times, you know, reach out to the church family. And, you know, church really should be a family. We should be like that. We should be that close, that we trust each other. And it can be a growing trust. Uh, you know, I promise you, uh, I don't want to speak out of turn, but... But I promise you, if you come to Gail, ladies, with, with issues and situations, that's going to be private. That's going to be protected. And it's the same with me with the guys. Um, you know, that's confidential. Uh, uh, and so one thing that church shouldn't do, sadly we do sometimes, it's, it's not like, hey, let's have a prayer meeting and it's going to turn into a gossip session. No, no, no. No. Uh, when we talk about real stuff, that should be something private that we can trust people. And that be, can be something that we grow into. So as we're coming out of 2020, and if, if you're like me, there's some things in 2020 that I'd like to forget about. Now, there's some things the Lord did that really shook up the church, and it's probably that was his will. But as we go into 2021, if the Lord would give us that year, I'm excited about a lot of things that's on the horizon. And, you know, one thing that we know, the Lord is going to be working uh, you know, he's not trapped in a calendar. He's not trapped in a specific year. Uh, 2020 didn't surprise him. He knew everything that was going to happen. And so just like that, as we go into 2021, if the Lord gives that to us, then we can be excited about things and we can anticipate, Lord, hey, we're going to be one year closer to the Lord's return. You know, uh, all of us will be one year older. You know, and for some of us like me, that's, that's not so fun anymore. You know, birthdays used to be fun way back in my 40s, you know, or whatever. But as each year goes by, it gets more and more difficult, it seems like, except the Lord is there. Amen? Okay, so so we can trust the Lord. So at this time, I think we're going to go ahead and have uh, Take Sure come on up. And I think Lizzie's going to be escorted down the aisle, last I heard. Okay. Yeah, so come on up here. And I'll make an end of this video. God bless.